Hi everyone, Claire Rogers here. I'm at Glen Arbor Golf Club for the Berenberg Invitational and we have some time with Fred Couples this morning and he's gonna join me for a scoop. So I got three flavors of ice cream that he can choose from and I've got a lot of questions. Let's go. Let's go cookie guy. All right. Are you an ice cream guy? Yeah, you think? Yeah. What's your favorite? You know, for about four years it was Talente. Ooh. And now we've gone back to pretty much this size Hagen dazs Yeah, so yeah. Hunter is 15. He has his flavor. Uh huh. And then Suzanne has peanut butter chocolate. Oh, that's good. And I honestly go with anything that, that she gets. All right. But do cookie doughs. Can't go wrong with cookie no. dough. No. I want to hear about like your golf origin story. How you even got into golf? Well, and this is, anyone wants to get an interview. I don't do a lot of these anymore. <laughs> but if we start out with a little cookie dough, I'm all for it. Um, I grew up in Seattle, go real fast, played a lot of soccer. And my dad was a co baseball coach and my brother is nine years older than I am, but he was a really very good baseball player. So I was the bat boy for his high school team, blah, 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 blah. And I played some golf. I loved it, but I was more of a couple junior tournaments when I was 10 and 11, and I turned out for my father's baseball team, which was all kids in my class, but I was a year younger, almost nine full months. So I was only 12 for their 13-year-old team, so I couldn't play in his team. And I didn't want to play on anyone else's team, so I started playing golf that whole summer. And from then I played soccer in the winter and golf in the summer and just really loved golf. I played at a, a really nice little fun public course I played with people when I was 12 and 13, aged 16 to 70. I didn't have a whole lot of friends that played golf. It wasn't really the kind of like a nerdy thing to do back then, but most of the guys I played with were, you know, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. So you've been playing for a while then, and we hear a lot about these um, major stops, but what is your favorite, like, tournament experience that's a non-major? Well, Riviera is immediate. Um, it reminds me of a little bit of, it is West Coast, but a little bit of Seattle, really small greens. And then I'd say over the years, when I started playing a lot, Jack's Tournament Memorial is all time. Um, there used to be one in Denver. Uh, my mind's blank on the name of the course. I, I hated the course, but I liked everything about it. And they had shakes and they kind of copied what Nicholas did at Mirfield. But I, I, of all the tournaments I played, I even played Riviera into my probably mid-50s. I'm a Seattle kid, but I lived in California, and I always wanted to play there. And it's just such an, it's just such an amazing place to play. I was lucky enough to win there a couple times and lost a few other times that I felt like I could have won, but lucky enough to win twice there. So you went to college with Jim Nance. I did. And we see, you know, we see a lot of both of you now. Right. What were you guys like in college? And do you have maybe a story you can share with us? Yeah, I just told a story the other, some, Jim did something, which is not shocking for a company. And this guy said he was absolutely incredible. And he says, your name came up. So he, Jim likes to tell funny stories about me. The, really what, what he did for, for me, he got, I went three years to Houston. I didn't go four because I didn't want to. I just wasn't really getting anything out of school. And back in 1980, people weren't leaving college golfers. There might have been some basketball players that didn't go there last year or whatever. But Jim Nance was, uh, he was our sweet mate. So John Horn and I were roommates, Blaine and Jim were roommates. And really, we did everything together. Uh, and he kind of got us through school. At night, he would come back and he worked. We, I didn't, really didn't even know he was doing radio stuff and he'd come back and I, I can name a few, you know, he interviewed Nolan Ryan, but, but he was pitching for the Astros, he, but he got Muhammad Ali. And you know, uh, you're just sitting there as an 18 year old, unreal. And then he would do stuff with us and mine was always gonna win the masters. And so it was one of the, as he'll say, one of the hardest eight Sunday uh, events that he ever did was the year I won um, and I'm sure there are a lot of reasons why but you know the stories he gets picked on a little bit because everyone he was on the golf team you know and he was supposed to be like us but he was on the golf team because the coach knew how great a person he was when he was 18 years old and our coach used to say you might win a Masters you might win a US Open but Jimmy's going to be president of the United States one day 
And I think he's probably got a way better job at what he's doing with <laughs> CBS than the president. But he's an amazing guy. If you want a real quick story, the, the year I got into the Hall of Fame, um, I had to be there a little earlier. He flew in. He was going to introduce, induct me and Ken Venturi same night. So at about 4:30, he says, uh, "Come on down to my room. I want you to go over your speech. I want you to read. I want you to read your speech to me." And I said, "Well, Jimmy, I have it down." He goes, "No." So I go down there. It's a very nonchalant, typical me. And he goes, "That's not the speech you're giving tonight. This, this is you're going to go down to history in the Hall of Fame." So then he wrote, you know, he does it on cue cards. Maybe you do it too. I don't have any idea. <laughs> so he wrote eight cue cards. I'll, I, I may still have them. I may not, and I said, but Jim, I can't say a lot of this stuff. I don't even know those words. So then he'd scratch them out and he'd put in, you know, another word in there for me. And I ripped right through it. And he, if I knew he was proud of me, then I knew I did okay. But that was one of the things where you're not giving that speech. That's not a speech <laughs> you're gonna give. And I was so nervous. I wasn't nervous until he gave me these cue cards. And then I was like, for two hours, couldn't function. So I've heard that you're a big art guy, collect art. Yeah. Where did that interest come from? And over the years, you've probably collected pieces. I don't know if you have favorites or... You know, it, it actually, it's weird where it really came from. I think baseball cards. I used to love baseball cards. And then I would put them in a vault or a safety deposit box. You know, you touch them, you might lose value. And it's, you know, they're encasing. And I thought, you know, what would be something that I could really look into? And I'm not a big spender. When I, when I say, oh, I went from baseball cards to art, but I started out with art, you know, that I kind of have a knack that I like. And I've had other people tell me in the last four or five years that when you pick stuff, I really think hard about it. And if you're the dealer, Claire, I'll say, you know, Claire, you have that piece in there. I, I, you know, I'm not going to pay you that for it. And they'll say, well, that's the price. And so then I'll call three months later and the piece is still there. And I say, I still have an offer. And that's kind of how I buy it. I don't walk in and say, I have got to have that. But I'm not one to say I want to match my carpeting or my furniture. I have art. Some of it's blue, some of it's green. You know, other, other stuff that uh, it, it's, I like some art that's just caked on there. I just like when the guy's painted and, uh, it, you know, you stare at it from angles. And I've purchased in the last year a couple they're Roland Pedersons from, from the same gentleman who's in Carmel, Josh Hardy, who helps me. He's, he owns an art shop there, and sometimes he'll say, stay away. You know, it's a learning process. It's like anything when you're spending. But my art is not a ton of money. I'm not, I'm not buying $300,000 pieces of art. I like other art, and I try and exchange it a little bit, too, to keep you going. Because once you get your house full, I'm not buying art to throw in the corner. So I'll trade in a piece and get another piece. But it's fun, it's, it's challenging. But I'll sit around my house at times all by myself and I'll just go and stare at it and see if I can figure out what the hell they were trying to accomplish. So you have a lot of golf experience, but if we're taking golf out of the picture, what would your favorite sports experience be? Well, we, we talked about Jimmy. I've gone to a couple Final Fours uh, with Jim. I did go see Let's see, I'm from Seattle. I did go to Arizona to see the Seahawks lose to Brady when we had the ball down there in the goal line. That would have been unreal. They won, I think, I might be wrong, they beat Denver badly, I think. They won the Super Bowl the year before, is that correct? And then we went next year or the year after. Um, but if I really was going to go do things, for me, baseball, some people think it's very slow, but to go... Um, I'd like to go to a World Series. I've been to a few of them. And my favorite playoff sport is hockey. I can watch hockey all day, all night. It looks to me like once they get to the playoffs, they literally, I don't want to use this word badly, they want to kill each other. And there's no, you know, guys will come out and they work really, really hard and it's fun to watch. I don't know many hockey players. I know a few. But uh, the playoffs is a unique situation for me. I, I watch every night. So now we're going to ask you about a few people in the golf world, the Lakavas first. Yeah. I know you're close with them. What do you think makes Joe such a great caddy and then maybe a favorite memory that you have with him? So he will tell you a lot of times I'd hit a shot off the tee, and as soon as we got off the tee, we would talk about sports. 
and then he knew that. So if I was quiet, he'd bring up something. But the thing about Joe is he's really, really a very funny, you know, people say witty. I don't know, really know what the difference is, but Joe's a very funny guy. But when he senses that you're struggling, he gets right in your face. He drove everywhere. I don't know if you knew that. One of the, one of the, well, here's the Joe LaCava story <laughs> is, so one winter he called up and said, uh, hey, I, Ken Greens, I don't, not counting for him anymore. Are you available? I said, yeah. So the first tournament was the Bob Hope Classic. So he comes out there and I live out there. So he stays and we go to Bermuda Dunes. Now it's six miles away. I can't find the course. Keys are in my bag, <laughs> which they always are. When we finish, there's no keys. The keys are in his pocket. He says, I'm driving home. There's no ways back then. He just, I was embarrassed. I couldn't find the golf course. He, not making this up, he caddied 22 years. That's the only time I ever drove a car with him in 22 years. So we go to a tournament. He would pick me up at the hotel because I wasn't I wasn't going anywhere. So we'd, I'd say, Joe, we play at 8.20 tomorrow. Pick me up at 6.15. He's sitting in front at 6.13. We get in the car. We go to the course. We finish. He drives me back. We do have dinner most of the nights, but I, I drove one time in 22 years. And that's, I bet everything I own that I'm correct on that. He just wouldn't, first of all, not because I wasn't a great driver. He just wants to be in control. So then one time when Tiger hurt himself at Doral, I saw them, they, you know, they had pictures of him driving back up to West Palm. So I texted him. I said, I know Tiger's hurt, but I noticed you're in the passenger seat. <laughs> oh, he ripped, he says, yeah, this is a bad deal. I hate this, I want to drive, but he's in control. With me, he could just push me around. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he did. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jordan, what's your friendship like with him? Michael had a camp. Everyone loves Mike, right? From yeah. uh, Be Like Mike. Michael had a camp in Santa Barbara, a basketball camp for kids. I'm going to say six to maybe 14 year olds. So we played golf every day. And so I started playing with him. And this went on for six or seven years. Um, and the reason it stopped. Um, is because he had moved his camp to during like the PGA. <laughs> so I said, Mike, why did you do that? Because we were playing every day, 36 holes. Wow. It was great for me. I could do it. But one thing about Mike is when you play your first 18, you don't stop. They bring food to him. Even if he, he doesn't really eat much, then you go play another 18. We played, I didn't play, but sometimes they played 45 holes and he would get done five or six o'clock, go down and he would hang with the kids till eight or bedtime, and when I was married before, my stepson was in the camp, and it was really kind of fun, because then I could go down a couple nights as parents and get in there. Other than that, Michael pretty much had a closed shop there, but I've always liked him. I respected him that he loves golf, and then the craziest thing ever is when I told him I was, he was gonna be an assistant captain at the President's Cup. And so, on national TV, he thought I was semi-BSing, I Jay Haas, and so I have my phone in my pocket and I'm, and I'm doing the little thing like we're doing now. And I said, and, you know, Michael will be an assistant also. My phone went off for five minutes and it was him. It was him and some of his buddies texting me. You're, you're kidding me. He was incredible. He, he took care of Anthony Kim, Hunter Mahan, Sean O'Hare. We didn't really have a pod then, but he really liked those guys. And they were like Sean O'Hare just stared at him. Yeah, I was going to ask, were they No, just out? literally <laughs> stare. Anthony Kim was a cool cat. Yeah. And, you know, had probably every Air Jordan shoe there was. Sean O'Hare just literally, <laughs> he wanted to do everything he could to play well for Michael. He didn't even know I was the captain. <laughs> but that's, Mike um, is amazing. Built his own course down there. I just really like guys that like golf. Steph Curry is an amazing guy. I've only played with him twice, maybe three times. But I I text him a little bit, not to bug him. Michael, I could text right now and he'd come back, dude, what's up, bro, where are you? <laughs> you know, but he's fishing a lot now. He just is a guy that I really like. I'm a little older than him. I can latch on to him and it's stuck and I don't need to feel like I'm force feeding myself on him because he always comes back and he, you know, he's just a good man. And then my final question, just 
anything you want to talk about with Tiger related. I know you guys have a group chat I've heard, maybe yeah. with JT. <laughs> we do. I don't know how much you can share from that, we but do. I'll take any Tiger story sure. or anything. <laughs> okay, well, normally this is how it goes. So, a couple times I would text Tiger, and then the last probably time flies four years JT's been on it we would go every night every night and Tiger stays up late JT not so much so then we would flip if it got to be nine o'clock California time and midnight for Tiger then I would just leave JT out of it but a couple times when Joe was catting for him we would go all the way and I would say something like you know Tiger I have an idea for you what what is it I'd say I know you got the TPC coming in Augusta. I think you should play. I told him to play, um, I'm going to screw it up, the Tampa, the Rattlesnake Club or whatever, because I played only a few times there and I played well. I didn't get a text back. And then the next day I didn't get a text. And then the next day, so I called Joe. And I said, Joe, you know, I think I might have gone too far here. And he said, well, actually, he talked to me about playing. If you remember, he almost won. He had a shot, shot at birding the last hole. And I don't know if, I, he doesn't need me telling him what to do, but that's Tiger. And sometimes he goes silent to really twist and make you think like he's mad at He's never been mad at me once. I'll never do anything to tell anyone something. But the stories usually go, uh, now Charlie, and then I watched Sam play soccer this year. He sent me the link to watch it on my little phone, and he had a lot of respect. I said, no, Tiger, I played. I love it. She's a really good player. And then they lost in the finals, one nothing on kind of a one nothing, I think, on a weird goal. So he, 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 like, he loves me. I love him. Um, I would love to practice with him. It's something I've never done. I just would like to go hang with them three days. But when that time comes, it'll come. But believe it or not, as close as we are, I'm never going to say, hey, I'm, I'll wait for him. So if he sees this, he might say, but the poor guy, you know, I would, I told him I'd give him my ankle if I could. I, you know, he knows all about a back. I tried to help him a little on that. You know, I said, look, you, you, you know, you, you can't do a lot of things. I know you think you can, but this is when he really, years ago. Yeah. I said, one of them is, don't let Charlie run in and jump into your arms. That's, you know, if, or just be ready. And then, of course, my, my guy, Tom, said, stop worrying. Wear better golf shoes and wear tennis shoes. If you're going to a black tie function, wear tennis shoes. Forget what it's all about you. And, and he, he appreciates me, and I, I just love the guy. Awesome. Well, Fred, thank you so much. Okay. This all is right, awesome. Claire, I really appreciate it. Can I finish this? Yes, a little absolutely. Bit? <laughs> it might have gone a little melty, but. That's okay. It's like a shake. <laughs>